attention is not concentration because attention is indeliberate while concentration is deliberate indeliberate means effortless there's no self centered effort made in attention it happens automatically spontaneously when the sense organs are alive but in concentration there's a selection of a choice concentration is on a selected object of concentration therefore there is a method to eliminate other objects and concentrate on a particular object and therefore there should be a self center concentrating there's a self there is i concentrating i am concentrating not the sense organs are attentive sense organs become attentive and become aware automatically because they are living when we are living the eye can see the ear can hear the nose can smell the tongue can taste the body can touch while the mind the mano mind is alive in thoughts and feelings because creation of thought forms in the mind are automatic spontaneous but in concentration there is a deliberate attention focused on a certain object therefore in attention the activity is selfless and spontaneous while the activity called concentration is self centered and motivated and there's an object and aim that aim is in the future unborn future we are concentrating on a subject certain object expecting something in the future may not be long future may be immediately even after the present moment that is our future present moment is living the next moment is not living not born while concentration is based on past experience through our liking we select something that we like we like something due to past experience therefore in concentration the mind is focused not only on the present but also in the dead past and as well as the unborn future expectations are of the unborn future the experiences that lead to concentrations are of the past the dead past but in attention is a thing that is happening every moment from moment to moment attention is of the present not related to the past not related to the future the future is unborn the past is dead 
the present moment is living, therefore, attention is an activity of the present moment. In such a case, as there is no selection, there is no desire, there is no liking. When there is no liking, there is no disliking. Disliking is based on liking. Disliking is always based on some kind of liking because we dislike a thing or being when that being or thing is not in the form, in the way that we like. And that our liking is based on past experience. And at the moment we like some being or thing, expecting something return. That is in the future. Maybe immediately after the present moment. The moment immediately after the living present is unborn, yet. And the experience that leads to such selection is of the dead past. In these circumstances, attention is of the pure heart, of unprejudiced mind. Both our liking and disliking are based on our prejudices, of the past, of the dead past. Therefore, in attention, the mind is enlightened. It is free from ignorance, ignorance of the present moment, ignorance of what the sense organs are aware. The sense organs are alert and they are aware. That is attention. And that is the present moment, free from ignorance of the present moment. And it is free from disliking, no resentment. We just become aware of things that are available. That means such a mind can take things as they are. Take things as they are means the mind is not burdened by our dislikes for selection. Therefore, attention is choiceless awareness of the sense organs. And also, choiceless awareness of all the sense organs. In concentration, a sense organ is selected. An object of concentration is selected by the self, the self-center. That center is an illusion. That center is mind-made. But in attention, there is no illusion. That mind is living in the living moment, the present moment that is born to decay and die instantly. It is not everlasting. As it is free from attachment, free from resentment, and free from ignorance, it is an enlightened mind. Buddha, referring to the Nirvana, the supreme bliss, realized by an enlightened mind, describe that state, the state of Nirvana, as in his own word, Ragakoyo, this comes in the fourth volume of the Sangita Nikaya at uh, page 47. These are the original words of the Buddha. Raga koyo, dosa koyo, moha koyo, idang muchati nibbana. Nibbana means the mind free of attachment, resentment, and ignorance. 
Attachment is raga. Therefore, free from attachment is vita raga. Resentment is dosa. Therefore, free from dosa means vita raga. Ignorance is moha. Therefore, the mind free from ignorance, the mind that is living in the present moment, is Vita Moha. That is the state of Nirvana, bliss of Nirvana, described by the Buddha as Vita Ragi, Vita Dosi, Vita Mohi. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier, enlightenment realized in Nirvana is called Raga Koyo, Dosa Koyo, Moha Koyo. And that is, that comes out of attention. Attention of the present moment without any choice, without any liking or without any disliking. Being aware means free from ignorance of the present moment, the reality, the living reality. And that is the type of an enlightened mind that has realized the supreme bliss of Nirvana. Therefore, in our attention, in our choiceless awareness, we experience the bliss of Nirvana. That is free from attachment, resentment and ignorance. Therefore, choiceless awareness is not only the path to enlightenment, but also the outlook for Out, is a outcome of awareness. Once the mind is enlightened, the mind is free from attachment, resentment and ignorance. And it is living in the present moment, unprejudiced by the dead past and the expectation of the unborn future. It is in the present living moment, which is an actual reality, which is a reality that is born to die instantly. Because the future moment can't lose. The moments are coming one after the other. Every moment is born to decay and die instantly. Attention is being attentive of that ultimate truth. What is the ultimate truth? Everything and being is born to die. That is what Buddha's first disciple realized by listening to the Buddha's first discourse called Dhamma Chakka Pautana Sutta. That disciple was called Kondanya, the ascetic Kondanya. Out of the five ascetics who listened to the first, first Buddha's first sermon, only the ascetic called Kondanya could realize what the Buddha has realized. The ultimate truth the Buddha realized at the enlightenment was that everything is born to decay and die instantly and therefore we can't hold on to nothing. No, can we give up nothing. We can't hold on because everything is instant. 
He said it is called Sena Bangura. There is nothing to hold on and nothing to give up, nothing to reject, nothing to accept, but just to be aware of things. And there is a state of an enlightened mind, but full of attention. It is free from attachment, resentment and ignorance means it is free from thinking because attachment, resentment and ignorance are forms of thought. Attachment I like, resentment I don't like, ignorance I don't know. Those are thought forms. We like, we think of things that we like, we think of things that we dislike, or we think of things that we don't know. When the mind is free from liking, disliking and ignorance, there is nothing to think of and such a mind is free from thinking. Attention is a state of mind free from thinking. Thinking is deliberate, attention is indeliberate. Attention means choiceless awareness. Awareness is our sensitivity. Since organs are aware, that awareness is called attention of the sense organs. And it does not think because it has no liking, disliking or ignorance. Therefore, attention is choiceless awareness of sensation. And that is the state of a mind that has attained enlightenment and realize the supreme bliss of nirvana.